So the sends a whole bunch of troops to fight World War I. You have to understand, troops, uh, ships, uh, supplies, we made a difference. I need you to understand that the, the effect of that on, at home was like in the organizing, on the economy of Canada. Canada before World War I was, was, was not industrialized. After World War I, it was industrialized. It's through the experience of World War I that Canada the industrializes. It's through the experience of World War I that Canada becomes officially a nation. It is because they fought side by side, people from Quebec with people from other places in Canada. This is the first time that has happened for any reason. And they and through the blood of the World War I, which was exacerbably like exceedingly tough, this is this is what forged our nation. And particularly when we had success that no other group had, particularly Vimy Ridge. Now, at Passchendaele afterwards happens after Vimy Ridge. So we'll discuss the two, the nature of those two battles. Yeah, so then, so its effects on Canada's identity, then it has effects on Canada's society, Canada's politics, uh, the War Measures Act, income tax, a whole bunch of innovations and for, from the government's point of view and from Canada's point of view, there's lots of changes that happen inside Canada. Canada recognizes and effects on workers, effects on what, what people happens afterwards. The attitude towards war shifts. Remember how ready I ready was the start? Well, they're not so ready after that. So there's a whole bunch of change that'll take place in Canada that is a result of this war. And then resulting from the end, why the Allies won, and the effects on Canada and the world. So one side wins. As a result of that side victory, and why that happened, we have the 20s and 30s, and World War II. World War I is the defining event in the 20th century. It leads to all the other things that happen, including the Cold War, because the Russian Revolution happens in World War I. It leads to the United States becoming number one. It leads to a whole bunch of changes that you need to understand. So World War I is pretty complex. Everything is. I'm trying to explain it to you. If lectures aren't working, there's lots of other ways. I'll put, uh, I, that's why I put the readings up there. That's why I have the textbook. I'm trying to get you to understand the answers to these five questions. Thoughtful, informed answers. Any questions about that? I'll make this available every unit. If I don't, I want you to put my hand, the, screw my hand to the sticking place, to use my fat quote. That's that's from not direct paraphrase. The sticking place is what I so yeah. is where I got in the paraphrase. And we'll not it's um he's, she's trying to convince Macbeth to do the dirty deed and, and so the dirty deed. Yeah. There you go. The dirty deed is to kill the king. Okay, so now timeline. I actually had it printed, but now it's gone. I'll go back to the line. Yes, it is that the Stop touching my iPad. Get your own iPad. Oh, I'll just do that. So, timeline. What's happening? Timeline of what? Of this unit. Of this, of this unit. unit. And then our class type. Tuesday. Okay. I'm supposed to discuss Canada. Roll. Canada's roll in the major, it's like the major battles. And I'm not going to get to it today, so I'm going to have to do the next class. Will you be posting Uh, Yes. Okay. Yes. Major battles, Canada and the world. So the major battles, Canada and the world. And then last, I will get to the home front. I'm not going to get to it today. I won't be able to finish. How much time do I have? Oh. I've got, I've got some time. I've got some time. I've got some time. On Thursday, I wanted to end the war. You're not going to end an entire war by Tuesday. I will.
we'll try. <laughs> it didn't happen. What? Monday. Review. Wednesday. Test. Netflix. When would projects Friday. Friday. Projects do. This is a provincial exam, essay question, Zach. So I start with this because the effects of World War I, this is what they expect you to be able to discuss. So this is right from the marking sheet. This is right from the marking sheet of the provincial exam for the teachers to use in the marking. Now, are you going to be discussing these in class, or is this kind of like us just, oh, okay, I'm going to... I'll, but it doesn't make any sense unless put them in context, yeah. right? I could say, yes, the gain political independence for Britain went from colony to nation, <laughs> proved to be valiant fighters, well respected. Yeah. There's no, it's hollow. Okay. Okay? So we have to fill in some of the details to prove these things. Right. But these are part and parcel with the questions I put up on the board. Question number, gain political independence from Britain, effects of the war. Proved to be valiant fighters, well respected amongst other nations. We'll talk about the, the nature of those battles that took place in that. Went from colony to nation. Uh, very simply, Canada became officially an independent country in between the 20s and the 30s. The Statute of Westminster officially made it legal. The highest court in Canada became in Canada. Everything became Canadian as a direct result of World War I. Military Canada proved to be creative and respected. The, many of the ideas used for later wars and the end of the war was Canadian in origin. We'll talk about that too. As a result of the war, Canada became more confident about its nationhood and its tone for greater international involvement in the interwar period. Yes, true and not true. Actually, this one I slightly disagree with, but I'll get to that. There are other effects on Canada. For example, Canada's um, economy is shaped differently. The society was different as a result. All kinds of things. Yes. Okay. So this actually scrapes the surface of what we're actually going to talk about, which makes sense because it's provincial. Okay. Yes. This is going to be put online. Yes. Okay. What's the document going to be called? How about World War One notes? Okay. PDF. 
That's fine. Okay. Uh, well, there's, there's more. There's, there's so what is, you'll see. You'll, no, no, jumping ahead. That's at the end of the whole thing. So let's. Now, are, are you guys ready to be part of the. We're going to go with. We've talked about the cause of World War One. My official World War I cause was the nature of the, the distance between the state political system, meaning mostly monarchies, and the industrialized societies that they led. Yeah. Yes. The nature of the political systems at war with one another was made them distant. The rulers were distant from the industrial and complex states that they ran. I'm still at the nature of the political okay. systems. Okay. Want to write it down? Yeah. Okay. The number one cause of the war, in my opinion, is the distance between those who ruled in an archaic, I'll call it archaic, fashion system. monarchies and the complex interrelated okay I have to because I'm doing it in one sentence I'll explain each one okay the complex interrelated system that resulted from industrialization in Europe. Industrialization in Europe? I know, I know, I know, and I'm just, I'll explain it all. Thank you for doing this, Mr. Whiteman. Yes. Okay. So, this is me, Mr. Whiteman. There's all kinds of things that I'll explain that are going to prove this point. The distance, they were all, except for England and France and the United States, they were all monarchies. Okay? So the first, I'll explain. Monarchies. Single ruler, unelected, Possibly what? Corrupt. Certainly in, inept. <laughs> and, and, and Napoleon proved, for example, that even if you're brilliant, and he had an eidetic memory, mathematical mind, good at all kinds of things, you can't rule a modern state by yourself. Wait, you're he saying, failed. You're saying England wasn't? England was not a modern state. They had ruled by parliament and a cabinet. They were constitutional. Okay constitutional monarchy, oh. like Canada, but their rule was not by, by a king. The king had no effect. So very little. Germany was a monarchy. Germany was a monarchy. Russia's a monarchy. Austria. Italy's a monarchy. Austria's a monarchy. These countries went to war with one another and had no clue about how to proceed forward. They didn't have an understanding of the nature of war or how to change. There was no... And when the war started, they couldn't do anything to stop it. There was no machinery available to stop it. They wouldn't, they wouldn't, they never said, okay, this is silly, why don't we just talk about this? They had already personally invested too much and they weren't personally, professionally able to distance themselves from the reality of war. Okay? So, this, this is number one. And so what happens in it's a and industrialization has meant that they've got these incredible capacities to make war. Nation states modern nation states industrialized and um, Nation states industrialized and how to put that? What exactly is a nation state? A nation 
state is a, a, a group of people who identify themselves through, as in one language, culture, as a, that's a nation. So they have a certain set of shared, shared oh, so laws. so it's just like one country. Yes. Yeah, but there are countries, like Canada is not a nation state because it's a lot of different sure. ethnic groups that have different okay. sort of goals. Well, the stuff. irony is that it makes a nation out of a variety of difference, and that's what makes it. Yeah, well, which is, it sort of developed yeah. in one. It breaks the tradition, but, but nation like, straight is one group of people who decide themselves to be a group a, a, a ruled by one government. But and the thing is, who can act independently and make rules for themselves. Yes. But but I, I was just re like I was reading that like in Europe, there's a lot of countries that are sort of ostensibly nation states, but because the borders have been moved around so much, they're kind of like and just as as, a, as an example, I know it's for a fact to be true. Um, one um, sort of branch of my family originated well, they're Ukrainian, but the part of the Ukraine they live in is now in Romania. So it's not like even though they sort of yeah. identify as that, it's not. They're not, you know, Romania wouldn't be a nation state because there's a huge chunk of it that's originally part of the Ukraine. Yes, but which we're going to, through the 20th century, you're going to learn how Romania takes advantage of the history that it gathered. Yeah, it does. You'll see. It has, it, it benefits from World War One too. Yeah. Because it chooses the right side. Um, nation states industrialized and at war do more damage. than previously conceived. The romantic notion of what war used to be before World War I and after World War I is very clear. Okay. So this is the major, they didn't know what the effect of war was going to be. And there was no machinery to stop it once it began. Which is why you create the thing called an organization that is purposely created to have discussions before war can take place. What is it? Yeah. The League of Nations, which is the precursor. Which League. was a joke. But it's the first <laughs> time. Joke. First time. That it still is a joke for that reason. But Wait, the League of Nations still exists? No, the United Nations. And it's a joke, oh, too. Oh, well, yeah. <laughs> Everyone. Oh. The okay, if you're talking about jokes, it still is. But that's, yeah. we'll get to that. a joke? No. Are you going, are you going to say I'm not the League of Nations? Not now. I'm not done. We're not talking about the League of Nations until the end of the war, but I want to understand that the, the, the main cause of the war is this, this fact. Now, within that, you have things like militarism, their arms race between Germany and England. You have the rise of the nations. I don't want you to write all that down, okay? Because what happens is these countries, for their various reasons, get involved in a, in a war, and they couldn't stop it. They'd invested too much money and blood and time. And they weren't going to say, okay, now we're going to see who, who fights and who wins. That ego, that, that personal ego, still is involved in war today. It's very hard to say, okay, sorry guys, I didn't mean to commit you to this horrible conditions. Now, my bad, my bad, oops. Right? You just don't do that. Were, was there any war during the 1900s that really sparked like a protest among citizens? Like on the scale we saw, like, say, Vietnam... <coughs> There were I don't people think who were pacifists pass. were arrested. <laughs> oh, that's the same thing though. The hippies were arrested. I know, and but the, but it, the thing is, it became a movement. Not until the '60s, after World War II, change, things changed. Okay. Okay. So, um, the nature of war had changed, and it, it was slow to get the leaders to recognize. So that. there was more propaganda to say that the war was good. Oh, absolutely. Okay. Yeah. So people never, that never crossed their minds. Or very rare, very rare minds. So, we'll go back to the major questions. Okay. So, why Canada got involved? Simply because it was British. And the response by Canada was ready, I ready. And both governments joined to the one government. They became a union government. They sacrificed democracy, in a sense. At the stroke of a pen, they created the War Measures Act, which allowed them to do anything possible. Anybody suspected of being an enemy alien was given papers that they had to carry with them at all times. We arrested a whole bunch of Ukrainians, for example, because they had a German-like accent. So 5,000 of them were Ukrainian out of the 8,000 that were actually arrested. Because of the suspicion that they're going to cause sabotage or espionage. But that's so racist and illogical. I, I, yeah, so illogical, no, racist, yes. Conversation again. Okay. Now, last class we also talked about the nature of trench warfare and why it was such a grind. I will revisit that now, if I may. I'm posting... 
uh, the PowerPoint which leads to this. This is a simulation brought up by the BBC. Remember I told you about the Schlieffen plan? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So here, um, Germany has a plan to go around the French armies to let the French armies come in a little bit, but the Germans don't have the they don't have the guts to do it. It's by, too hard. By leaving, by with the Germans leaving and going around, is are, is that how they were planning to open up Germany by having their armies? Okay, no, the other way around. So this is the German plan. This yeah. is Germany. This is France. Yeah. <coughs> the German plan was to let the French come in a little bit yeah. and, and hold the Russians on the east yeah. and attack France through Belgium. Okay. Now what happens, also, is Belgium, okay Belgium was neutral okay. and they fought back, <coughs> slowing the advance. England right. helps Belgium and gets into the war because of Belgium. It's not because of France, it's because the Germans attacked through Belgium. So England is at the war to defend Belgian neutrality officially. And because England's in the war, Canada's in the war. The United States is not in the war at this time. And in fact, they want to remain neutral for many reasons. They think they're, they're already distancing themselves from Europe at this time. They're looking for an, in, they look for an independent foreign policy. I'm not gonna worry, I don't want you to worry about the states so much other than to say that they wanted to not be Europe. Their, their purpose, like Canada, not wanting to be American, they were born by the Europeans, the Ameri they were born by the English, they tried to distance themselves from purposefully from their mother, father countries. They were like the Ironically, of course, they had declared war on Spain and took a bunch of their colonies, including the Philippines, the United States. The United States had taken the Philippines from Spain, they took Cuba from Spain, they took Guam from Spain, they took a bunch of colonies from Spain, and now they're ruling them just like the Spanish did. They're not giving them independence. When? This is in 1900. Okay, but what I'm wondering is So the United States is a, as a new power on the world scene, and they're trying to distance themselves from being able to stay away from, the, from this battle, and yet profit from it. So... So they're selling more material to the English. Did the US ever actually get involved? Yes, in they, the will. they will. They will. Because if, if Germany wins, what happens to the debt? What happens if Germany wins the war? Then they won't be able to. They will not get at any of their money back. So whose side are they going to go on? Can they transport goods to Germany? Answer, no, because the English Navy prevents them from doing that. So they can transfer goods to England, and they do. Wait, what was Through the thing about Belgium? So Belgium's neutral. By Germany advancing through Belgium, England gets in the war. So now Why? it's Eng because, because they England, are the, England is supposed to be the protector of Belgium. Oh, okay. They made an agreement that if anybody violates Belgian neutrality, they'll declare war. Either the French or the Germans. Okay. So, so then, wait, what was this about the US? The US is not involved in the war at this time, at least on the battleground. They remain neutral. They try to stay away from the war and yet profit from it. So they try to try... Because they don't want to get involved in European wars. They don't want to die on the battlefields of, of Europe. They see but this as, look at how terrible those German, those Europeans are. Yes? Okay, so um, Canada got in the war because England got in the war because... Because Belgium because was invaded by Germany. Germany went through Belgium. Did they exactly. kill people in Belgium? Did they kill people in Belgium? Yes, they did, because they the Belgians attacked. resisted that. So they just went through and just killed people just because they had to go through because they were like, yes. in my way. Yes, yes, exactly. Oh, was Belgium doing anything? Where does no. the killing of the Archduke? Belgium doesn't care. <laughs> care. <laughs> and now, to the Germans, to the Germans, this war is they caused by... declared war on Serbia. Who? Wait, Russia. The by Russia. Wait, why is Germany mm -hmm. fighting Russia? And the French. Well, Think about they Russia's declared war on us, us, remember? Germany is at war with so Russia. So Germany says they declared war on us. Austria us? declared war on Germany. Germany. Germany said, and then Germany Russia says France war declares war on us. Hungary. And then Germany okay. came to defend so Austria Hungary against them. Russia. So How are we going to beat them? Russia. We want to take, we want to go behind their army. Belgium's so in the way. They're a tiny country, they can't put up resistance anyway. That's not, so it's a strategic decision. Yes, it's dangerous. Yes, it brings the English into the war. But we are going to go around behind the French armies so fast that they will not be able to stop us. So it's a strategic decision based upon not what is wrong or right, but what is more right. Is it more right to win the war or to lose it? They attacked us, remember? You better win. 
Yes? <coughs> so to them, it's a defensive <coughs> war, even though they're violating British and Belgian neutrality. Now, in Canada, yep. How do we know the Germans are not, like, planning to sleep in Plan V2 right now, so in case World War III strikes? Well, okay. Okay. let's say everybody's doing nasty, dirty tricks. It kind of doesn't make sense. Nasty, like, dirty tricks. I, this is the game of Thrones we're talking about here. It's the game of Thrones. Sorry, Zach? It's the game of Thrones. It's understandable how they got the motive to be so, like, take over everything in the immediate vicinity of them. In World War II, because they lost World War I, and Hitler was a bad man. No, that's overly simplistic. World War I is blamed on Germany. I think the Germany blamed the Jews. And then yes. See? So we'll get there. So, ladies and gentlemen, I just explained to you what happened. As a result of the British and the Belgians slowing the, the Germans down, the French also not being fully enveloped, by, like pushing into Germany, and the East, being the Russians being moderately successful in the East and threatening Germany, the German weak, this arm, this arm is not strong enough to complete its encircling action. And the French put up a stiff resistance and what's called the First Battle of the Marne. M-A-R-N-E. Wait, the French put up... The French do a counterattack. Okay. The, the Battle of the Marne. So this is 1914. Everybody thinks it's going to be over by Christmas. Now, how much ammunition... I'm gonna. Put, uh, there's a document I put there. How much ammunition? How much uh, like food supplies, socks, uniforms? Socks. Does it, yeah. Socks. You have to think of everything, right? You have to uniform and outfit an army. What, I'll just tell you quickly. Everybody runs out of ammunition by Christmas. So they use all their bullets. But what are they doing? Making an awful lot more. Everyone means both sides. They've expended all the bullets. Okay. Yes. Can I just ask a question? Yes, yeah, shoot. Related, but not necessarily. Okay, so <coughs> when they're like uniforming these people, do they just get <coughs> one uniform? Are there like like multiple uniforms? Because you know, clothes get dirty, and you shouldn't wear the same clothes no. every. You use the one. same clothes. That was like me in grade three. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, did, did you have those like one closet one, one uniform? Same outfit many times over. <laughs> one uniform. Like one pair of socks and underwear. Okay. I'll, I'll tell you what, I will share that document with you, but I'll call it, I'll give it a name. Give it a name called how, to, how, much, how much it takes to outfit one combat, one army, okay? And I, I've got a document that shows you that it's very interesting, it's very expensive, yes. Even if you're military today, you only get one pair of combats. Combats are the things that go over, it's meant to be dirty. Yes. So You get dirty. Yes. You're in trenches, what do Sorry guys. Do you think that if Chanel one of them is I can only hear one at a time. Chanel, War Crocs. Excuse me, guys. Do you think if one of the sides in World War One had better hygiene, like like things like they had multiple uniforms, they had no. better antibodies, no, that they would have won? No, no. But the Germans had a which you'll, which you'll see why the Germans had what's called better high. They had the high ground. So the low ground meant that you were dealing with water all the time. So in cases of trench foot and things like that, the Allies had far worse conditions that way. But they also had more food. Yeah. The Germans right away began rationing at the beginning of the war because their imports were at, an, at zero. Wait, the Allies were dealing with the, the Allies were dealing with the worst land strategically because the Germans